Hey everybody, welcome back to On a Technicality, and on today's episode we're going to be taking a look at how I clean dirty PCBs when I get them in. Before we start, if you could just hit the like and subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it. What we're looking at right now is an input-output I.O. board for the Hyper Neo Geo 64. Really hoping it is the driver's board, as I do need that for the driving games. That little piece of tape in the middle, which is going to be a massive pain to clean, says driver, so we're hoping for the best. What you're looking at on screen right now is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Excellent for cleaning, evaporates super quick. Definitely recommend using that. Get the 91%, not 75, it's just easier to work with. Additionally, you're taking a look at the Q-tips on the side. Now I use just a little vessel to put the rubbing alcohol in. Anything that doesn't have a hole in the bottom of it's totally gonna work. And I've got a couple different sets of needle nose tweezers that are good for taking off little bits of dirt and dust, and then a little uh, plastic pen and kind of like a blunt tipped edge that you can use to scrape. So let's get into it and I'll show you guys exactly how I like to clean my PCBs. So the first thing we're looking at this board, and that masking tape sticker is gonna be a pain in the butt to get off. And we've got a lot of dirt around these areas I'm indicating right here. So what we're gonna do is just put a little bit of that isopropyl rubbing alcohol into that vessel. You're gonna see I pour a little bit on my hands on the table just to show you guys how quickly it evaporates. You can plug this board in within 10 to 15 seconds of getting it wet with isopropyl alcohol. That's why I recommend the 91%. It evaporates immediately. So before I get into cleaning a PCB, I just like to identify where all the problem areas are. There's a lot of gunk and dirt on that right hand side of the PCB. And then this masking tape sticker, the gunk they leave behind is horrible to deal with. Don't use stickers on your PCB, or at least kind of just like tie a little tag around one of the capacitors and write on it. That way you don't have to worry about cleaning it up. Battery wise, that just saves the settings. It might be dead. We might switch that in a later video, but I haven't tested it yet. And then you'll see these heat sinks over here are a bit dirty too. Not usually as much of a problem. The BIOS chip is clean, so really not much to worry about there. And if we take a look at the back of the board, it is very clean. That's the side that would have been against the motherboard, so it doesn't really get too dirty. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this masking tape off, and you can see as I do that, the sticky residue is coming out in strings. It is gunky, it's gummy, it's going to make dust collect on it when you're using it. Just don't do this, it's a real pain, whether you have to clean it up at some point or if you sell the board, the next buyer has to do it. So a little matchbook underneath the PCB just so it doesn't wiggle around, I can use it easier. And then I'll just use a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol to soak that entire sticky area. Um, the isopropyl alcohol has a really good way of kind of de-gumming that residue and making it easier to lift up. I do apologize that my hand's in front of the camera a bit. You will see that there's that black staining on the Q-tip and that is just some dirt. What we'll do now is we're just gonna go ahead and take that little plastic spreader and we're gonna use both ends just to kind of move that stickiness around. Works well, it takes a long time and you do need to clean that spreader off when you're using it just to make sure that you're not putting goo back on other areas of the board. But that's kind of my method of getting this off. It's never gonna be 100% perfect, but it's gonna be a lot better than it started. If you have a piece that you can't pick up, I just come in with some electrostatic proof tweezers and just pick that up. I'll use the fine point of the spreader as well just to kind of move that around. It takes forever. It's never going to be perfect, but it's going to be a lot better than when you started. So now that we've addressed a lot of that sticky residue, we're going to soak this dirty part of the board in the isopropyl, and I'm just going to use the Q-tip to drag it back and forth gently across the PCB to lift that dirt and gunk up. You will see that inside that little vessel, some of the dirt is starting to appear, and we will need to clean that out because we don't want to keep putting the dirt on the board. But as a first pass, you don't need to worry about it too much. Just when you get like halfway through, I suggest you dump the isopropyl, clean out your little container, and then start fresh just so you're not reintroducing dirt and grime to the board. Coming up here as well, and a lot of dust and debris. The thing is, even though these are in sealed arcade cabinets, they don't really get dusted or cleaned when they're being used. So a lot of times when you buy um, vintage arcade gear, you know, anything like that, a lot of it's gonna need to be cleaned. And the isopropyl is your number one bet for doing that. Some people like to use toothbrushes to scrub the PCB. I find that a little bit problematic on some boards just because there's a lot of tiny surface mount components and I really don't like putting a lot of pressure on those. So I like the dab and swipe method with the Q-tip. I think it's a little gentler. It might take longer to do, but for me, it's foolproof and I've never once damaged a board using the Q-tips. So one of the hardest areas I find that needs to be cleaned are these heat sinks right here. They are very narrow, but you can just get the point of that spreader in there. They don't need to be perfect. These don't put out that much heat and they're not too covered, so you're not really going to need to worry about overheating the chips under there. The screws are on so tight, I couldn't get them off. I didn't want to try to. Could break the board doing that. You kind of just, when you're cleaning something, need to decide, does it need to be addressed or is it going to be good? 
All I do is just come over on the side of the board as well, use that isopropyl, and just clean up any areas where there might be some gunk hanging out. So anytime I get a PCB in, what I like to do is just look at all the capacitors, just make sure none of them are swelling, none of them are leaking. Um, it's not as common in late 90s capacitors as it was in mid to early 90s capacitors where there's a lot of bad caps coming out of factories, but all you need to do is just look at them. If they're not bulging in the middle, if you don't see any capacitor fluid leaking out, you should be good. You can use a multimeter to kind of test the capacitors to make sure they're operating as normal, but visually everything looks good so I felt comfortable running with those caps on there. The only other thing you can check on this board, and some boards do have them, are these fuses. They will blow if you put too much power in. Uh, you can just visually inspect them. You can see the fuse is intact. If it's blown, there will be a break in that metal right there. But again, you can just use continuity mode on a multimeter to make sure the fuses are good. So the last thing I like to do when I'm cleaning PCBs is just go ahead with some of that isopropyl alcohol and clean the JAMA Edge. Just like a Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, NES cartridge, any cartridge based game, if those connectors are dirty and they're not making a good connection to your JAMA harness, your game may not work. So if you're having any audio or visual glitches or the board's not booting, the first thing I always recommend is make sure that the JAMA Edge is very clean. This one doesn't have much dirt on it whatsoever, just a little bit, and you can see none of the pads or damage are lifted up. If there's a little bit of residue, you can use that plastic spreader to scrape it away. Don't use anything metal, it does scratch it too much, I use plastic. And then I'll just come around and get the other end of that jam edge just because all of those pins are utilized on the edge. If even one's not working, your board may not boot or you may have problems. So this one looks pretty clean. I'm comfortable with it. I think it'll work. But there you have it. There's the mostly finished board. Now it's not perfect, but a lot of that sticky residue is up. It is much cleaner. And we just done some things to make sure that it has a little bit more longevity in it. I have no idea if it works yet. I haven't actually plugged it in. I decided to clean it first, but we will be back with more episodes of Honor Technicality. If you do us a huge favor, hit like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Otherwise, if you want to follow us at Instagram at Chicago Game Collector, by all means do so. Otherwise, we'll see you next Tuesday for another entry in the mainline series, and we'll be back with more of the Hyper Neo Geo 64 coming up in the future. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, and bye-bye.